let's let f of x equal x squared minus the natural log of x squared on the closed interval from negative 2 to positive 4. Now first we're asked to find the first derivative. So f of x, f prime of x, is going to equal 2x minus, and when we get to that natural log, we're going to have to use the chain rule. So derivative of natural log is 1 over that x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Uh, we should clean this up a little bit. We'll have 2x minus 2x over x squared. So this x will cancel with one of those. And we're looking at 2x minus 2 over x. It's going to be helpful in the next part to take this expression and write it as a single fraction. So I'll give my common denominator of x, and then my numerator will become 2x squared minus 2. In the next part, we're asked to identify the critical numbers. And critical numbers happen when the derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. So my derivative, I just found out to be 2x squared minus 2 all over x. If this is going to equal 0, then that means the numerator is equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 2 would equal 0. x squared would equal 1, making x equal to positive or negative 1. On the other hand, we also have to find out when the derivative could be uh, undefined. It's going to happen when the denominator x is equal to 0, making these three our critical numbers. In part c, we're asked to evaluate each critical number. Since we found our critical numbers to be at 0, 1, and negative 1, all we have to do is plug them in. So f of 0 is going to be 0 squared minus the natural log of 0 squared. Since we can't take the natural log of 0, um, this expression is going to be undefined or does not exist. Uh, for f of 1, we're going to take 1 and plug it in there. 1 squared minus the natural log of 1 squared. That'll be 1 minus 0, which is 1. Similarly, with x equals negative 1, when I take negative 1 and square it, minus natural log of negative 1 squared, we'll again get 1 minus 0, which is 1. Now, in order to finish the problem off, we're, in Part D, we're asked to identify where the local and global maximums and minimums are. We're, since this is a closed interval, we also have to check the endpoints. And that's what's happening with f of negative 2 and f of 4. So I'm just going to take negative 2 and plug it in. Negative 2 squared minus natural log of negative 2 squared gives us 4 minus the natural log of 4. Grabbing the calculator and typing that in there, we'll get 2.613. For f of 4, same deal. 4 squared minus the natural log of 4 squared. 16 minus natural log of 16 gives us a value of 13.227. Since we're on a closed interval, I have the values of all the endpoints as well as, um, as well as any critical values. Now we can identify local and global maximums and minimums. As I look through the value of all these, I see my biggest values to be here at 13.227 and my smallest values to be at 1, and here's another one. However, there's one thing that definitely concerns me, and that's this undefined that's sitting right here. So one thing that could help us out uh, in determining what's happening with that undefined value uh, is to look at the graph. Sketching the graph on our graphing calculator uh, gives a shape that looks similar to this. We found out that at negative 2, this had a value of 2.613. At negative 1 and positive 1, the value is 1. At 4, it went all the way up to 13.227. And at 0 is when it was undefined. And now we can see that it's undefined because this graph is going to continue to rise as we get closer and closer to 0. So, um, looking at our overall graph to identify local maximums, minimums, and global maximums and minimums. We can see that overall we have these two lowest points here at 
x equals negative 1 and positive 1. Those are going to be our global minimums when x is positive or negative 1. Um, there uh, is no local minimum because our only two minimum values are going to be those global minimums. So for local minimum, we can write none. Uh, when it comes to maximums, there is this local maximum uh, when x is equal to 4. Because uh, just locally, that's going to be the largest point there. But there is not going to be any global maximum because this thing's going to grow forever.